G'day, I'm Paul. That is my Ranger Raptor. We're about to take delivery of it. And in this video, I obviously want to take delivery and hit the road, but I also wanted to explain what is actually involved in pre-delivery. That is a couple of grand, maybe even more that you actually pay to a dealer to get your car ready. I'm going to run you through the entire process and exactly what happens. I'm also going to explain how I got this car as early as I did, plus the way that you guys can actually get your next Ranger Raptor a little earlier than what some people are currently experiencing. And then finally, we're going to hit the road and I'm going to answer as many questions as I can that you guys have sent through on social media. Now, if you haven't done so already, please make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. And if you do want to skip ahead to other parts of this video, you can use the time codes on the screen, or if you're on YouTube, you can scroll down and use the chapters below, but let's get cracking. So it is time to reveal the car. I know you know what it looks like, but I'll run you through the spec that I chose. We'll get rid of our little ribbon over here first. All right, let's do it. Here it comes. <laughs> Look at that, some expert silking skills. So uh, I went with Conquer Grey. Uh, I saw this color when it first launched and also with some of the pre-development cars that we drove and I thought it just looked really cool. And I'm glad that I chose it. It looks fantastic both in the sun and here in the shade as well. And later on when we talk about pre-delivery, I'll run you through how they get it looking so good as part of that whole delivery process. Um, there weren't really sort of any options for me to pick with this, but I did go with the beadlock rims. So Sean, come around here and I'll show you what they look like. Okay, so down here, these are the beadlock capable rims. So this is actually just a, a dress kit that sits around the edge there. You have to actually get the beadlock accessory kit if you do want to use the beadlock functionality. And keep in mind as well, you can't drive on public roads with beadlocks running on the car. So you need to drive to your destination uh, and then go to an off-road destination and then fit the actual beadlocks and it is a pain in the ass process. So why did I choose them? I don't know, I just thought they'd look cool. <laughs> <laughs> here they are here. I think it actually works well with the color. Um, Ford has actually just updated this uh, in terms of pricing. So any cars that are delivered from March 2023 are now more expensive. But they also get the ability to fit an electronic roll cover on the tray. And they've also changed the spray and bed liner here in the Raptor to just a, a fit in sort of uh, plastic one and that allows them to fit that electronic roll cover as well. Also means you get the key uh, button as well and the functionality inside the tray. So let's run through the pre-delivery process and I'll give you a better idea of what is actually involved in preparing one of these cars once it comes out of the factory and is ready to be picked up by the customer. So when you pay your dealer delivery fee, what does it actually cover? Well, the first cost component is the car being trucked from the boat to a holding yard and then from the holding yard to your dealership. Obviously, the further the dealership from the holding yard, the more that costs to actually achieve. Once it arrives at the dealership, one of the pre-delivery staff check over the car to ensure it hasn't been damaged in transit. It'll then sit in the holding yard at the dealer until it's ready for the pre-delivery process. For the Raptor in particular, it comes into the dealership's pre-delivery area and one of the pre-delivery staff tests all door handles, switches, USB ports and lights to ensure they're all operational. The tyres are torque checked and then it goes up onto a hoist. Once on the hoist, the lower engine guard is removed to ensure all the oil lugs are correctly sealed and not leaking. There's also a visual inspection of the underbody to ensure all of the components are in their correct position and nothing is too out of the ordinary. At this point, the car heads out for a test drive where all of the four wheel drive modes are checked and the driver also tests some of the vehicle's basic safety assist functions. Once it returns back to the dealership, it's up onto another hoist for a wheel alignment to ensure there's no deviation from factory specs. My car actually had a slight change on the front to bring it back within specification, but it wasn't anything too drastic. From there, it's off to the wash bay where all the stickers are removed and the car has a set of protective chemicals sprayed onto it. It then finally heads into the detailing bay where all of the seat covers are removed, the exterior and interior are detailed, and then it goes off to the dealership for the customer delivery. Okay, so now you understand how the pre-delivery process works and why they take your money to get the car ready. Um, now I'm here with this bloke that I met on social media, George Mazzecchi, you're the dealer principal here in Port Macquarie, right. Ford and a stack of other dealerships. Um, can you explain to everyone how I managed to get this a little bit early and... Yeah, so, so it's, um, as you say, dealer principal of the business and, and we, we're going through a bit of a rebirth and new showroom and, and, and really reinvesting in 
in the business and I thought it'd be great for us to get the publicity of delivering you a car. So yes. I actually put my hand up and gave you mine, you lucky bugger. But um, yeah, so that's, that's how we got here really. No, and look, that, that was a cool thing because I didn't want to trample on any customer's toes and I didn't want to jump the queue. And when George offered his personal car, I was like, okay, I'm going to take it off him and um, he can walk. So. <laughs> I didn't have to twist your arm no, very hard. No. Exactly. Um, now, we also had a quick chat as well. I know a lot of people are, are so interested in the Raptor. They're trying to get their hands on one. Some are being told 12, 24 month wait on these. Um, how does the allocation process work? I, I keep telling people go to a regional dealer because they may get a smaller allocation, but you have less demand, right? Yeah, exactly right. So basically the way it works is we've got a very good history of high series Ranger. You know, in, in Port Macquarie, we've been very lucky. We've sold a lot of Wild tracks and XLTs yeah. and in the past, and, and that feeds into the way that Ford allocates the cars. And so they see us as a, as a, as a high performing, high series Ranger dealer. And as a result, we, we get a, a healthy allocation, which is, which is great for us. Now, I don't want to promise anything, but if you give these guys a call, um, I'm hoping they might be able to get you a car a little early. Obviously, if you flood them all with calls, it's not going to happen. But if you can't get one through Port Macquarie, um, go to your regional dealers. Because not only are you supporting a regional dealer, you are likely to get a car ahead of a city dealership as well. So um, hopefully that's enough incentive for people to do it. How has the interest been so far in Ranger and, and Raptor as well? Uh, honestly, it's blown us away, as you can imagine. You know, we obviously, when, when it was first announced, we had a huge amount of, um, of inquiry. Um, but when they landed, it went nuts. And then with Everest as well, same thing. So, look, we've enjoyed having you, mate. It's, we, to be honest, we haven't, aside from allowing space for the filming, we haven't really done anything we wouldn't do for anyone else. Yeah, cool. um, but, uh, but, yeah, it's been a pleasure to have you. Excellent, mate. Well, thank you again. Um, let's hit the road, Sean, and uh, we'll rig up some cameras and finally go for a drive in my Raptor. Okay, we are leaving. It's time to start her up for the first time. Yes. <laughs> Love that cold start. So we have a fair old drive ahead of us. I'm going to have to try and make sure I don't smash anything on my way out here. <laughs> uh, but we are driving here from Port Macquarie all the way down to Melbourne. So it is going to be some good fun to get to know the car and see what it's actually like to live with. All right, it is time to leave the dealership and hit the road. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is Answering all your questions, I put a call out on social and uh, wanted you to fire off any questions you had about the Raptor and my experience, and I have an absolute stack of them. So I'm gonna answer as much as I possibly can, um, and then we will see how we go. So first impressions. Um, yeah, look, I, I have driven this before a, a few times now, but I don't know, it just feels a little bit different driving my own car. You know, the car that I own, that, um, I've actually followed like all along from the production process through to here today. Uh, yeah, it just does feel a little bit different. And look, the good news is it feels exactly like all the press cars as well, which means um, hopefully if you buy one, you're not gonna have any dramas with it. Um, yeah, the ride's great in these, and even on these roads here in Port Macquarie, they had a stack of floods last year. There's heaps of potholes and stuff, and it is just cruising along really nicely. Everything looks, feels and smells very fresh as well. So my car has 115 kilometres on the clock and uh, basically it arrived here in Australia at the dealership with 50 kilometres on the clock and as part of that pre-delivery process they do test drive with the car and, and that kind of thing so that sort of bumps your delivery kilometres up. Um, this is all sort of perfectly normal. Anything much higher than that I'd have a bit of a concern but to me this shows me that they have actually check the car out to make sure it's all okay and that there haven't been any dramas. I think, um, you know, I mentioned before the difference between regional dealers and city dealers. City dealers may go through a lot of these and have a lot of volume to get through and may not spend as much time with each car. Whereas here, I feel like they've actually dedicated the time to make sure that my car is ready to rumble as soon as I hop into it. And if you're watching this outside of Australia, uh, Port Macquarie to Melbourne is about sort of 1100 kilometers or something like that. So it is a fair old hike, but I am looking forward to really getting to know the car. Now, before I get to your questions, I just wanted to quickly run through fuel economy and what I'm experiencing so far. So the sticker on the window says 11.5 litres per 100 k's. That's on the combined cycle. Um, so the drive from Port Macquarie to Newcastle 
uh, which was about sort of 200 odd k's, uh, averaged 11.6 litres per 100 k's. Uh, that was in four-wheel drive automatic. I've now changed it to two-wheel drive uh, high range, and it's actually dropping down slowly. So it's at 11.5 now, and I'll keep an eye on it. But um, I can see there that there is a slight difference because when you do bring the little meter up ahead of the screen that shows you where the torque's going, if you do have it in 4A, it is shuffling torque to the front sometimes. So that means you are using energy and you're uh, basically using fuel then as well. So um, yeah, it is good to see that it is a little more efficient in too high, but we'll see how that goes over this longer distance drive. But yeah, comfy so far. These seats are fantastic. They hug you in beautifully and uh, really don't give you a great deal of fatigue. Okay, so I look different, don't I? I've had a, a wardrobe change. Uh, I was just staying in Sydney overnight. Well, a couple of nights because we had to duck over to Perth for birthday party of one of our um, one of our investors. Uh, he has quite the car collection, so that was good fun. Um, now, before I get to your questions, though, I'll run through fuel economy. So, uh, so what I did was once we got to about Newcastle, I switched it over to wheel drive high range. And that was interesting because our economy went from about 11.5, 11.6 down to about 11.2. And uh, I think that's actually pretty big in terms of the savings there. So if you are doing a long distance highway drive and you don't necessarily need four wheel drive running, I think uh, switching over to two wheel drive high range is probably the way to go. Um, now, I will get to your questions, but I'll wait till we get onto a little bit of highway where it's a little quieter. But what better time than to put this into Baja mode and see what it sounds like. Here we go. Yeah. All right, we'll give that one more crack. <laughs> that sounds bloody unreal. I just love the fact that it's a dual cab ute that sounds, I don't know, like an M3. <laughs> bloody awesome. So we're on the freeway, the highway, whatever it's called. We are making progress. There's like 700 and something kilometers to go, so a fair bit still. But I thought I'd get through your questions now and I've printed them off so that uh, we can be uh, safe and I don't have to use my phone while I'm driving. Um, the first one, do you really think you needed to buy this? And um, that is from someone that's related to me. Uh, I married her and she doesn't support any of the cars that I buy. Um, so the answer is yes, uh, but more generally, uh, why did I buy a ute and will I be using a ute? Uh, I don't know and probably not are the two answers to that. Uh, I just, yeah, love this thing and it's kind of the same as the other cars that I've bought as well. I've bought them because they've been cool and had stories behind them and this for me has a really cool Aussie connection and, and that is why I've bought it. So um, there you go, that's why I bought it. Uh, next one, how much horsepower with a stage one tune? That's a great question because uh, I know Herod Performance did a whole lot of work to the Baja 1000 Ranger Raptor that is basically going over there to compete now. And it has a Herod Performance stamp on it. Uh, it is stock, but they had to do some work for thermal management and all that sort of stuff so that it doesn't overheat. Um, so that means to me that they're probably gonna be working on something very interesting in the form of a performance tune for this as well. And I cannot wait to see what that looks like. Uh, I've said before, this is pretty sketchy in the wet, especially with this much power. So I can imagine what it'd be like with a bit more grunt. Perhaps I'll pair it with a set of tires, sticky tires or something like that. But yeah, let's see what happens and uh, see what they can extract from it. Um, will you jump it? Yes, I do have a plan to do a jump in this just to see how it works and, and all that sort of stuff. So. Yeah, we'll probably do a separate video on that and um, yeah, it should be fun to see just how well it jumps and whether Ford will back the warranty if anything breaks. Hope it doesn't. Uh, waiting time, okay. So I mentioned at the start of the video there with George that uh, if you do want to get one a little bit quicker, I would go to a regional dealer 
don't all go flooding him because um, he obviously wants to support his local area, but um, I think he's willing to give up a little bit of stock for anyone that sort of watches this and gets in touch with him in Port Macquarie. But yeah, I'd encourage you to go to your regional dealers. They have a much shorter wait list and in towns where you do have a high supply of utes anyway, like Port Macquarie, they actually get a decent allocation of Raptors without a huge uh, order log, if you get what I mean, compared to a city dealer where you've got much bigger population. So uh, yeah, in terms of wait time in general, I've heard it's like 12 to 18 months now, depending on where you go. Uh, so yeah, just keep that in mind. Are you going to PPF it to avoid stone ships? Yes, I would like to. I haven't done PPF stuff in the past, uh, but I think it is probably something I need to consider, especially given you know this is likely to be driven off-road and that type of thing. It probably is going to be worthy of getting PPF on it just to make sure nothing um, damages the vehicle because once you've got a stone chip, it's just a pain in the ass to get it sorted. So if you do have any recommendations on PPF people, let me know in the comments section below or even any brands that I can use as well. Let me know down there and I'll um, investigate that. Are you going to put uh, something over the tub? Uh, I would like to get something though. So yeah, let me know what you reckon. Should I get a roller cover or should I get just something basic on the back? Uh, how many rear child anchor points? Two, so you can carry baby seats in the back. You have two uh, top tether points and also two isofix points. Uh, utes often feel disconnected from driver feel. Is this sorted in Raptor? Uh, look, it is it is tricky to nail that down. This is probably the best driving you out there, simply because you can absolutely rag on it in the dry, and you know it has body roll and that sort of stuff. But it's all very controllable, very manageable, and it doesn't feel at any point like it's going to come back and bite you. And that, to me, is the sign of a Ute that's actually had a lot of engineering put into it. You jump into uh, literally any other dual cab ute. We tested Hilux recently, that was sloppy as. It had so much body roll. Uh, the stability control was kind of useless for, for faster driving. And obviously it's not built for that. This on the other hand is built and engineered for that sort of stuff, so it needs to be good. Here on this choppy road, like it is terrible on parts of the Hume here down to Melbourne. It actually performs really well. That uh, Fox, Fox suspension with that live valve tech is, is sensational. So it all does a great job. And then the fact that you can change the suspension and steering feel here on the steering wheel, I think it's pretty cool. So what do we think? Um, look, so far so good. Um, it is actually really comfortable. Those seats are fantastic. Uh, we're averaging now 11.2, which I think is pretty impressive. So uh, like I mentioned before, two wheel drive high range seems to be the most efficient setting. Radar cruise control works well. The steering assistant works well as well. So yeah, I like it. We're gonna keep driving. Gonna go have a little squiz at the submarine, do a quick wee and then we'll hit the road again. Um, are you going to modify it? I don't know. Look, I, I haven't really modified any of my other cars. I put wheels on the Supra and um, it was just for fun and that, that was with semis as well. So had a bit more traction. I, I guess I can modify this, but I probably won't. Uh, I think it's pretty capable as it is. The second you start modifying it, you have issues with warranties and so on and so forth. So I know a lot of people will modify them and I'm keen to see what they look like. But for me, I'll probably keep this stock. What's the lowest time you've achieved with the Raptor V6 0 to 100? I think it was 5.7 seconds. I remember when we were testing that, I gave it another crack when it was dry and we did that. I reckon with a bit of uh, perseverance and a bit more trying, I could probably get it down to 5.6, which I reckon is pretty unreal for something this size. Keep in mind a Ram TRX is low five seconds. And let me know in the comments section whether you want us to drag race a TRX against this. I think it would be pretty fun. Highway exhaust drone? No, it is sensational. So sitting on the highway at the moment doing 110-ish. And uh, you do hear tyre noise, but with the exhaust, even if I move it now over to Baja mode, yeah, you do get drone in Baja mode, but if I go to, uh, if I go back here to quiet, you don't hear a thing. It literally goes dead silent inside the car in terms of exhaust notes. So that's pretty awesome. Can auto stop start be disabled? Unfortunately not. Well, you can disable it. There's a button here, but it can't be disabled for each start. You have to manually push the button. I think there's probably like a fuse or something you might be able to pull. I will investigate that because I pretty much switch it off all the time. I can't 
understand those things anyway. So, um, uh, what fuel to use? E10, 91, 95, or 98? It can support all of them. Uh, look, I wouldn't touch E10 just in general. I'll just steer clear of that stuff. But yeah, this will run on 91, 95, and 98. Uh, just a bit of background there as well, quickly. Australia's unleaded fuel quality is terrible. So, sulfur content in our uh, 91 RON and 95 RON is is really bad. So it's um, diesel is good. It's capped at 50 parts per million, but I think our unleaded is is something like 150 parts per million cap, which is third world country style levels. So keep in mind that yes, this can run on 91, and you do get a reduction there in your power output. Um, but to be honest, I I wouldn't run anything except 98 through this anyway, because you're going to get peak performance. 98 fuel actually is better in terms of the sulfur content, which means you're going to do less damage to the engine, will run more efficiently and smoothly. It's just my opinion, you can run this on whatever, but I would just stick with uh, the good stuff. What's happening with exhaust? Stainless steel, is it going to be for all Raptors? Yeah, so when we did all of our development drives to start with, um, they were all blacked out and I thought it looked really cool at the back there because, you know, it would match with the rest of the thing. Uh, but yeah, they had to change it to stainless steel because during all that development driving, they noticed that stones were chipping away at the black paint. And obviously for a customer, that's going to end up being annoying. So they went to stainless steel. I'll probably look at wrapping that black somehow. I don't know what you would wrap it with given it's an exhaust or paint it maybe. But yeah, I think it definitely needs to be black. The stainless steel just doesn't look right in my opinion. And then last question, is this the most excited you've been for a car? It actually is. And um, I don't know what it is. This thing is just the ultimate versatile weapon. You've got um, you know, room for family, you can drive it around the city, you can go camping. I thought I would do that, but uh, you can go camping, you can tow some stuff with it. It's just an all-rounder. So um, yeah, I am seriously excited for this and just getting some quality time behind the wheel and just having a good crack at it. So um, yeah. Okay, so uh, here's something I wasn't expecting. We are currently taking a, a bit of a detour because um, there's been a massive accident on the road up ahead. So we're currently, I don't even know where, uh, Tolarook. Um, so yeah, we're doing this big detour through the countryside here. It actually looks pretty, pretty bloody nice out here at the moment. It is a little wet, but um, yeah, a little bit of adventure, getting the car a bit dirty, doing a bit of gravel road driving. I don't love that because I don't want to damage it just yet, but uh, we can tick that one off the bucket list. So we are all done. Finally made it back. It took ages because of all the detours and stuff like that. So final fuel economy, 11.3 litres per 100 k's. It was actually trending downwards, but when we had to take those detours, I decided to have a little bit of fun on the gravel roads and it slightly went up a little bit. Then we had a second detour in Melbourne. It was just an absolute disaster. So we did make it eventually. Um, I really enjoyed just getting to know the car and it is so comfortable. The autonomous steering stuff works really well. And just like in our reviews where we've tested it on the banked oval, it actually works well in person too. It doesn't sort of do anything too strange, right? Our cruise control works well, so everything was great and I'm super happy with the purchase as well. Now, I've answered as many questions as I could, but I know there were stacks more there and I wanna get a better idea as well of what else you want us to do with the car. What other content do you want us to produce? If you scroll down there, let me know in the comment section below what you'd like to see us do with this. And if there are any other questions that I did miss, I'll answer as much as I possibly can. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure you like it and you share it with your mates. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon. That way you can find out every single time we do fun stuff like this. But until next time, take it easy.